Welcome to Dan's Bangers, and in this episode we're going to talk about uh, the buyer's guide for the Hyundai Amica. Yeah, okay, it, it's an ugly car. I, I think it's an ugly car anyway, but if you do want to buy one, which, you know, I think probably you, you should. I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I can't believe that I'm actually suggesting that somebody buys a Hyundai Amica, but it's really grown on me. But in this episode, I'm going to go through if you do want to buy one or what you want to look out for, what's the costs uh, and common issues. So, first of all, it is a reliable car. Hyundai are usually in the top 10 of the JD Power Surveys uh, because, you know, they build not exciting cars, uh, but they are reliable and dependable. And the Amica is, is no different. It's it's a really good little dependable car. Uh, the good thing is that if you're looking for choice, then the Hyundai Mika is not going to help you uh, with different choices and varieties because basically there's one engine and two trims. So you get, especially the one we're talking about. So we're like talking about the pre-2006, so up to 2003. A Hyundai Amica and really you're looking at the one litre 55 brake horsepower engine and then the two trims on offer are basically the same I mean you get alloy wheels on one of the trims uh, you know and air conditioning uh, so yeah basically uh, there's not much variance in the model ranges that you could buy but then you know you're buying a no-nonsense little reliable runaround. You know, what What do you want in life, eh? Anyway, <laughs> let's have a look at what it costs to run and what are the common issues. So, first of all, costs. Uh, miles per gallon, I am impressed with the miles per gallon. Basically, you're looking at about 40 miles per gallon plus, depending on how you drive. I've been driving up and down the motorway and I'm still getting about 40 odd miles per gallon. And out of a one liter engine, that's that's pretty good. Uh, and it, it does 70 miles an hour. But I'm going to go in more into the review in the review video. This is just, you know, costs. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's good on miles per gallon. Insurance. <laughs> Bear in mind that at this kind of car, you're looking at insurance for other people, not for yourself. Yeah, you're, you're looking at insurance if you hit somebody else, um, you know, you, you, you're covered. Uh, so... I looked at uh, a voluntary excess of 250 pounds on uh, one of these vehicles, on, on the one I've got on the, on the video here. Uh, no, no claims discount. Again, be aware that your prices are going to vary massively, okay? This is just a guide based on the other cars because I get insurance quotes on all my cars um, on all the, exactly the same parameters, yeah? So, social, domestic, pleasure and commuting, I'm 40 years old, I'm an IT manager, in a very boring job, um, and I'm 10,000 miles a year, okay? And, interestingly, this is one of those weird things with insurances, that fully comp is actually cheaper than third party only. So, I guess because uh, people who go for comprehensive cover are less of a risk than people only get third party. So it's a really good tip. So really look at comprehensive uh, as well as third party fire and theft of third party only. So for fully comp, you're looking at £239.65 pence a year. So £240 a year with a £250 excess. Now you'll understand from that that the excess on the policy is more than the car is worth. Again, this is not really to cover the car. This is to cover you hitting somebody or somebody hitting you. Not really. No, you hitting somebody. That's basically all you're covering yourself for. Um, if you wanted to get third party only, the cheapest I could find was £500 with a £400 excess. So, yeah, th uh, fully comp is cheaper. Half the price of just third party only. So it's, it's good to know, again, uh, on my Jag XK8, I'm looking at about 500, uh, 400 and something pounds. So yeah, it's it's half the price for a quarter of the car. <laughs> there you go. Tax. Well, again, tax, 
isn't as great as it could be if this was a, if this was a newer car uh, then the tax would be significantly lower but because it's an old car we're talking about here um, it's 14 pound a month if you pay on direct debit monthly so that's 178 pound 44 a year now you can it'll be a little bit cheaper if you pay for six months or if you pay for a year cheaper again not by much but yeah 178 pound a year basically for car tax uh, for this car and then we get on to the really good news common issues do you know what normally i can find quite a lot of common issues with cars and i look around and and i usually have common issues um you know when people say you know this car generally has these problems the cars i have have those problems there are no common issues that i can find on the hyundai amica uh, other than uh, the automatics have issues so if you get an automatic version uh, you're going to have issues as i would expect from a car like this uh, so best bet to get the manual in my opinion i put a new battery in it uh, i put new alternator belt and can i just say changing the alternator belt was fantastically easy the design that hyundai did on changing the alternator belt was just a pleasure to do it was really easy we'd done it within about half an hour it's fantastic so i'm very happy with that uh, and the parts are really cheap and really easy to get hold of my top tip if you are repairing one of these is buy the parts from ebay and look for ones that come from india yes you're going to be waiting quite a while for delivery but these cars are so plentiful out in india that there's loads of brand new parts uh, that you can get for it so yeah that's uh, my tips on buying the Hyundai Mika. I personally think, I mean, I'll do the proper review, but it's been a pleasure to drive uh, and have this car, and I'm really impressed with it. Thank you very much.